presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to uh, Al in Homosassa. Hey, Al, what's going on? Uh, isn't it wonderful? This gentleman here with the gold report, right before the market fell apart, ended up with PAAS. We had a 98% gain in a year. And, uh, I mean, you weren't 99% proof like Irish whiskey, but we had a good gain there. You always told us to do what we feel comfortable with. And if I lose a little bit of money on the table, I will, but I know that I just pocketed eight or $9,000 in two weeks. That's a beautiful thing, man. Now, Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go seven hours a day. We go 24 hours a day in the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. Accept others the way they are. You cannot change other people. To try to change them to fit what you want them to be is like trying to change a dog into a cat. Or a cat into a horse. They are what they are, and you are what you are. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 33, NASDAQ up 56, SP's up 10, uh, SP's up 7, gold contract up $4.90 trading at 1979 an ounce. We have silver up 3 cents, $23.67 an ounce. Light sweet crew down 51 cents, $71.64 a barrel. Notes and bonds, a 10 year note. Down two ticks, trading 113.26. The 30-year up one at 127.30 and King Dollar. King Dollar right now trading up 132 ticks, 104.136. The Euro's at 106, the Yen's at 139, the British Pound's at 124 to one US dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Wanna well, know what's going on in your world? In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do you have? Well. It looks to me like we're building cars for the next swing point, folks. The swing, that, the swing point I'm talking about is higher, too. Take a look at this market. What you're going to see in the S&P out here today, the SPY. You know, yesterday you didn't do any volume. We only did 70 million yesterday. Today is going to be less than that. But what you did today, you went down to 425 and rejected it. So what you actually have is you're going against 91 million now. And when you take a look at this, we're so close to the next swing point that it's like, you know, this thing wants to get hit. So you take a look at it, you're going to see that swing point right there at 431. It's not going to be much to do that. 431.73, that's the number. We go into the NDX 100, we take a look at the NDX 100, same type of setup. Now the NDX has further to go, there's no doubt about that. But the NDX did the same thing, you know, right now you're up 31 cents, 355.21. What we did is that we get down to 352, rejected lower price, you're gonna have lighter volume, and you're going into, on this one, you're going to 72 million, okay? So we take a look at this, put this baby up here. Now, this swing point is definitely much higher. And, you know, that we're talking 371. IWM, now you can see, let me put the S&P up again for a second. So I want to show you something here because when the S&P, oh, you got to go back so far, it really doesn't matter. No, the IWM folks, that the IWM, now the IWM broke, okay? One by one, the IWM normally is the, you know, well, not normally, the last two times, it took a long time for it to get going, but guess what? It broke today and it broke with, the, it actually had the sign of strength on Friday. On Friday, it took out the consolidation. You get the follow through today. It's going to have the volume. That's saying now the IWM is going to make its way up to the 191. And of course, inside that IWM, and that's what you're seeing out here today, is that you're going to see that money is there. You know, they're saying, okay, they're going into the banking sector. Bottom line, see the KRE. That's, they're going into that sector, man. And we start talking about that sector, which gets so intriguing, of course, is that you can see that the SEC 
went after uh, Coinbase today. Now, it's so intriguing about the Coinbase one versus the Binance. B Binance, I can see in a second. The Coinbase one gets interesting because of the fact that, let me see when they went public. Because you can't go public unless the SEC says it's okay to go public, folks. Issue information. Let me just see this. Oh, that's interesting. So they might have did it. Oh, that is interesting. Hold it. They might have did that through. See, that says public offerings not available. I wonder if they did that through a swap. Anyway. Um, so that, that, that changes the, that, I don't know if it changes the concept, but the bottom line is that, um, you know, what is intriguing, especially with Coinbase, is that going after the, I can pitch a Bitcoin in a second. After the exchange, uh, it, it's, that's kind of intriguing and kind of shaky, I think, because of the aspect of people. The way market's supposed to be set up, they should be, they're supposed to be able to do what they want to do. You know, they haven't gone after any of the banks that, you know, went down the tubes yet. <laughs> that's the thing is, is, is you're going to see kind of on a continual basis that it's going to be pretty wild, meaning that, you know, they protect the banks, but they're, they're worried about this uh, central finance. That, that, that's, that's, the, that's the real bottom line. Um, okay, so... Okay, so yeah, one of my targets is he's saying that they did do, they do an offer in 2021. I don't know why I don't have it. But anyway, if that's the case, that's what's really kind of weird about it because they said, okay, here it is. Yeah, you can go public. Nope, they know what they were going to do. And then all of a sudden they say, hey, we're going to change. Now, they've done that before. They did that to the large banks in the crash of 2027, uh, 20, uh, 2007. When they, you know, when JP Morgan took over, Washington Mutual, they basically were getting nailed and they spent a huge amount of money for something they didn't need to do and they were actually almost forced to, to buy um, Washington Mutual. Some of the higher volume equities out here today, which is going to be a low volume day, and yesterday was a low volume day also. You get Tesla up two and a half dollars, we get Advanced Micro up 590. Well, let's go into the NDX first. So inside of the NDX, the move is out here. You get uh, Pindo do up 7%, AMD's up 5 You get uh, Warner Brothers up 4.5%, and, and JD.com's up 4 Taken away from it. Illumina's down 3 T-Mobile's off 3 Broadcom's off 2.5%. Inside the uh, Dow Industrials, what do we get? Strength versus the weakness point-wise inside the Dow Industrials. <clears throat> you have Goldman putting 35 positive points, American Express 27 Goldman 22, taken away from it. United Health 85, Big Mac uh, 35, Merck 23. We we'll go to the bond market. Bonds, folks, they want, might take higher price, lower yield. I think we topped out in the rates, man. That's that's the bottom line. We'll see how this shakes out. Um, kind of a sideways moving out here today. Low volume, rejected lower price out here. Right now, the 10-year uh, is yielding 3.6. Stay right there, folks. Coming back with the CEO of uh, Vista Gold, Mr. Ed, uh, Mr. Fred Ernest. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. We have exciting news, Tigers. This June, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle will be hosting two webinars, providing insight into his renowned market timing methodologies. On June 8th, Tim will delve into the S&P 500, teaching sentiment indicators, identifying market bottoms and divergence, and so much more. On June 15th, Tim pivots to the gold market, taking a look at cycle analysis, ratio studies, advanced decline indicators, and other important tools for analyzing this sector. Sign up today on TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, 
dollar yen, as well as many more, and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrial is down 20, NASDAQ's up 52, S&Ps are up 8. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Fred Ernest. Fred is the president and CEO of Vista Gold. Uh, I happen to own Vista Gold. Vista Gold uh, is building a shareholder value um, with one of the largest uh, Australian and most advanced undeveloped gold projects. Building shareholder value with one of Australia's largest and most advanced undeveloped gold projects. There's no doubt about that, man. Welcome back, Fred. How you doing? Very well, Tom. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Well, you know, I saw the um, the news release you put out on May 25th. So tell us a little bit about that news release. Yeah, really quickly, uh, you know, we uh, we have an agreement with the Northern Territory government, whereby they have retained the uh, the environmental liability for the uh, project site up until the point in time that we make a definitive investment decision. Uh, that was uh, renewed. Uh, that that agreement is now valid through uh, through uh, the end of the year 2029, and uh, we're really excited about it. I, I think it's a demonstration of the outstanding relationship that we have with the Northern Territory government. No, I can see that. I can see the context of when you're actually negotiating with other companies. I I, sh I expect that's really important, right? Absolutely. Um, you know, just having having runway, knowing that there's, uh, you know, the, the, the comfort zone of being able to advance the project, go through the studies that need to be uh, undertaken without having the government, you know, breathing down our back uh, is certainly a huge advantage for companies that would be looking to partner with us uh, on Mount Todd. Sure. Now, Fred, does this have to do with that? You know, at one time, you know, this was a, a mine, right? And then, so is there more? Is there water in the mine? What does this have to do with? Does this have to do with a legacy issue from a long time ago? 
Absolutely. Um, you know, when, when you look at the pictures of, of the mine site, you see that there's a, and we have them a up right now. facility, the waste rock dump, you know, these things, uh, I see. We, we get a lot of water and, and uh, you know, the government looks at it from the point of view that these are things that need to be reclaimed. We look at it as, as you know, this is infrastructure and things that we'll be able to utilize. So, uh, and, and, and to, to reclaim them uh, as part of the mining operation will be part of our bond. So the government maintaining that, that liability up until the point in time that the decision is made to develop the project is a tremendous advantage to us. Wow, that is really cool because when I read that, I really didn't get that. I, I got the aspect of, I thought it had something to do with the licensing that you have that much more time in order to make a deal with someone else. So that's a lot bigger than that. That is really cool. So, it's, it's both, yeah, but it, it is, okay. it's, it's, it's really big. Yeah, so let's talk about the mine. I have the, I have the, the presentation, because I know you come out with another presentation on the first, and so I have your presentation up here. I mean, this is, there's a lot of infrastructure here, Fred. There's a tremendous amount of infrastructure. You know, we mentioned the tailing storage facility. It has capacity for the first 80 million tons. That's roughly a third of the reserves of the project. There's paved roads to the site, um, power lines, a natural gas pipeline, and we plan to use that, that, that pipeline to generate power uh, with, uh, with our own power plant allowing us to, to generate power for somewhere between um, a, a quarter and a third of the cost of buying it from the grid. You know, it's, there's, there's just many things that were built and paid for by the previous owners and operators of the project that we're able to take advantage of that give us, you know, cost advantages and time advantages. We just don't have to take the time to build some of these things. Yes. And, you know, the bottom line is, is that I guess when we're talking about when this mine was operating versus where we are now, I mean, we have gold that's running at 1979. I suspect when, you know, when you guys had come into this project, I, I believe gold was like at the lows, right? It was like 280 to 320 or something, right? The the mine the mine operated in the in the mid nineteen nineties. It shut down in nineteen ninety seven. Okay. Operated again for a year in two thousand. In that period of time, the gold price was in the range of at a low two sixty. Yeah. At a high, you know, three hundred and eighty. I mean, we're in a tremendously different environment today than what those operators faced in their day. You know, it's amazing, Fred and folks. I started the gold report um, in 90, 98, I think. And Merrill Lynch had one of the best commodity desks, and they, they were shutting it down. Whenever with gold was 282, because uh, I got into it 252. But it's so weird that that happens a lot. Merrill Lynch had one of the best commodity desks in, in Europe. They shut it down. They, they opened it back up like six years ago. But it's like, it's, it's wild that that's what does happen at severe lows, right? That, you know, it's like, okay, I'm gonna throw in the towel. Yeah, it happens, it happens a lot, Tom. It happens in a lot of industries. Uh, you know, I, it's really a credit to those who are persistent. Yes. And have the, the, the foresight to buy things when they're cheap and to buy things when nobody else wants them and to hold on to them because they're the people that actually realize the tremendous value creation. No, I agree. I, I, someone told me a quote, and I'm sure most of us know it. You make money buying at the lows. That's when you, it's not that's the selling, it's really the making the money buying right, right? I mean, that's what it comes down to. So that we have the project now where, you know, at the 1979, things are still tight, you know, interest rate wise, but it's gonna get intriguing here, Fred, because, you know, the way that the, the Fed fund rate is looking right now is that we won't go up in rates in June. And, you know, we'll see what happens in, you know, the rest of the year. But I'm sure that that's another maybe um, more wind at your back if, in fact, these rates have topped out. Would that be correct? Or the, the yeah, rates we, have we something? believe so. Okay. We believe so, Tom. And, and you know, the other interesting thing is that the gold price typically lags some of the other indicators. Yes. And while we have a really good gold price today, we believe that there's strong reason to believe that in, in the coming year, two years, three years, that we're going to see tremendous increase in the gold price 
which will drive considerable value creation for Vista shareholders. No, I can see it because what happens, folks, is this, is that when the rates top out, it doesn't mean inflation is topping out. So that's when everyone's yeah. going to go into gold. That's, they, they, they don't have much choice at this time, Fred. We had a couple banks go down, right? And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, we got to bring things a little bit slower, you know? So it, it's really intriguing. Um, and so the, I'm, I'm sure you're still out there, you know, looking at all these different um, companies, uh, looking at this project, yes? You know, there, there are companies that are still undertaking due diligence. Uh, we continue to, to knock on doors to sign confidentiality agreements. Uh, and we'll, we'll, see where this, we'll see where this goes. I love it. Well, listen, it's always a pleasure, Fred. You have a great one, safe one. We look, I look forward to having you on again. All, all the best, Tom. Thanks, Fred. Be safe. Have a great one. Have a safe Bye. one. Stay right there, folks. We're coming right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. NN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials trading up 10, Nasdaq's up 46, SP's up 8.5. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Bowser Chapman, as we do each and every Tuesday. And don't forget, folks, Bowser does an outstanding program here every trading day, 10 to 11 Eastern Standard Time. Also has a great newsletter, the opening call. Now, it's very easy to get the opening call, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to go into newsletters. You're going to see the opening call on the left hand side. You can get the opening call for one month for $149. You get it for six months for $6.95, which is a savings of $199 at 22%, and you get it for one full year. 
for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Now, they all come, folks, with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So you can come over, you can get six months, you can get a year, you get a month, whatever you want. But let's say you get six months. Well, bottom line, if you like it, great, you can keep it. 29th day, for some reason it doesn't work, guess what? You get all your money back. Basil Chapman, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you doing? I wish it would get a little bit warmer up there. I'm coming up to visit, and it's like, oh, my God, I don't believe it's only like 67 degrees to 70 degrees up there, man. Yeah, this, this weekend will be quite nice. Uh, we'll, we'll give you some nice weather. So good. How, when, you, when are you coming? Good. This weekend. Oh, well, that, you'll have good weather. Good. Good. Yeah. Well, how's, so, the, how's the weather in the market? What are we well, doing? The weather in the market, it, you know, last week I spoke to you about the the concept that I had that it's very important that this, this market, it's done that since the summer of 2010. Every time one particular sector gets overbought or even oversold, there's this rotation that the one sector that was strong takes a breather and another sector gets strong. And I said to you, it's really important. And all week, in fact, in every one of my shows, I was saying, it's very important at this particular point, if anything's going to happen, it's not that the um, semiconductors are running strongly or we're going to, uh, didn't know they were running as strongly as they did, but it was more important that we rotate into the uh, into the financials. You want to see the, the XLF, the S&P financial sector, ETF rally, you want to see the KRE, which is the regional bank rally. So that was really important. So even though we've gone, uh, we've added to our long positions in the Dow, the most important thing is I was speaking to you about some stocks that we've had, individual stocks like SIM, which is Symbotic. I said it's had a fantastic move. We're in from the 21s. It's trading at 35 and it hit 37. But Congratulations. I was thinking, thank you very much. And I was thinking that these are the ones that are going to probably have some kind of a digestive phase because this is in the robotic warehouse automation systems. But it still seems to be holding in another one, which is directly in that area, which is AI, Global X Robotics and AI ETF, which we've had for some time now, is at a new recovery high. And I was saying that these moves to the upside, I would expect that if there was going to be a rotation, that they would, they would maybe they'd pull back a bit, but they would not continue to lead. Well, actually, they have been continued to lead. Even the SMHs, which are holding well, um, are pulling back a little bit, but they're still up near the highs. But I do think that this is a sector that is going to start to see some kind of a digestive action as we're looking at KRE, which is what we are long, which is the S&P Regional Banking ETF, finally have a little bit of, it isn't so much a rally, but it is a takeoff phase so that I can start to see, you can see this left side chart here, uh, where we had what I call a Chapman Wave price volume climax that was on the 4th of of May. It hit 3452 after it, this this gap down candle where the volume exploded. I love to look at that because that's where everyone's just throwing the stock out and said, I've had enough. I can't stand it anymore. And that's where the, I have a rule of thumb that if this is actually a Chapman Wave price volume climax, it should go for 28 bars, or in this case days, uh, to the upside, it should not retest the 3452 level. And if it holds sharply above the gap high, and in this case, that's in the 37s, and it's at 43.20 right now, it could even go for 56 sessions. So this is going to be a test of this particular theory. It's worked in other times. We'll see if it works now. And the other thing that I was saying is that I want to see the weekly. I'm not so interested in the daily. That's your that's your, your, your talk. Your momentum comes from the weekly. So the starter impetus to go up has come about. And, and if it could start to trade in 45 to 46, it's a 43.19, that'll be good. But the most important thing is you can see that the weekly chart, it was just, I mean, one day it's 65 and bam, just two months later or so, it's down in the 30s. So this is this needs a lot of work, but I like the fact in the weekly chart, in the monthly chart, you've got this beautiful arch formation. It's got a price time. I call this uh, this is price symmetry, where it goes from the 3348 low that was made around about July of 2020, all the way to 78 in January at a peak D, the fourth highest peak, where other things can happen. 
and look how it came down and had the one to one to the downside and it went all the way back down to the 34 level that 34.52 low of, of a week or so ago so this is really important i want to see the financials moving up and preferably i'd like to see the, the regionals because wow they've been they've been hurt badly and that's that's your every day i mean that's every town every city the yes. regionals are what keep things going no i can see that i'm telling you you know it's wild basil is that your name is synonymous with bifurcation <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny. It yeah. is. But isn't this bifurcation? Look, the Dow is up uh, one point here, the s and is up much more, and all of a sudden you've got the small caps going. And that's what I mean by this rotational action. So no, I know. Listen, I know when I hear it on Bloomberg, I, you know, like in your head, folks, okay, what happens is every time I hear that word, I say Basil Chapman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but absolutely. I mean, that's just a split personality. That's what the market it, does it, every listen, once man, in a while. You know, I mean, the... the the small caps are the last ones that went on the last big rally, too. So this is going to get really intriguing because if the small caps are ever going to catch up with the other indices, it's going to be like, are you kidding me, man? I mean, pfft. well, even even if they just have a pretty decent rally, I just don't want to see them going back to the most recent lows because right. they were not looking good. So this is important just to get off the ground. And I, I think they're doing that right now. And if if the um, fund managers start to see that the small caps are now coming alight, that this is this is the play, you will start to see that the semis kind of slow down. They might make it higher highs, but they're going to slow down the increment of the, the gains, and you'll start to see money flow into the... That's I want right, because they made flow. plenty of money on their chips, that's for sure. Hey, let oh, me absolutely. ask you, when you did that uh, workshop at, uh, at the MIT, what was the feeling for the uh, investors that were there? Oh, that was online that, anyway. That did... was online, so I really okay. couldn't... Usually, usually I get a real good feeling. I, I right. tell people to raise their hands who, who are bullish at the moment, right? right? Who have money in the market, who don't. But this is different. So, but I was talking about the, the the split personality that we needed to see those financials take over now, so that the market can sustain this rally. And I do see at some point a little later on, I can see us having another big pullback. But at the same time, uh, buying buying is coming in, and it's it's selective. And some of these real small cap, the single digit stocks are having a fantastic run. Yes. I like what I'm seeing. It's, this is this is what I wanted to see the spreading out. I want to see a broadening of this market. The selectivity we had seven stocks in the Nasdaq or whatever wasn't good. I like this broadening. No, I, I, listen, I get that, but I know that for so many IRAs, those seven stocks, a lot of people are happy because they're almost probably they're the seven biggest owned stocks also. So yeah, you know, people are making correct. money, man. Correct. Yes. Basil, you have a great night, safe night, and of course, we look forward to show tomorrow. And I'll show these stocks in my show tomorrow, yeah. That's Thank a beautiful you, thing. Have a great one, man. Have a safe one. You too. Thanks. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. 
Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. We have exciting news, Tigers. This June, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle will be hosting two webinars, providing insight into his renowned market timing methodologies. On June 8th, Tim will delve into the S&P 500, teaching sentiment indicators, identifying market bottoms and divergence, and so much more. On June 15th, Tim pivots to the gold market, taking a look at cycle analysis, ratio studies, advanced decline indicators, and other important tools for analyzing this sector. Sign up today on TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. So Dow. Dow Industrial is down 20, NASDAQ's up 34, S&P's up 5.5. If you hadn't heard it yet, folks, okay, you get the Live Golf Tournament and the PGA are going to combine. And the players, I suspect, the players that stayed with the PGA must be going out of their mind right now. Why? Because the fact of the matter is that the amount of money that got paid out on the Live Tour it was just huge, particularly for, for the, the folks that, you know, hadn't won PGAs, okay? So just to give you an idea, right? 600, 675 million basically got doled out pretty quickly. And if you take a look at this, let me see this for a second, because this is just amazing. And you can imagine whether if you're Rory or Tiger, it's like, okay, you know, it's more so the next level down that, you know, because when you, when you look at these numbers, so Phil Mick, Nick Mickelson, I mean, he was the king. He got a $200 million signing bonus. Um, and then after that, uh, bottom line, he won another $102 million on the course, and he won another $36 million off the course. <laughs> Dustin Hoffman, he got a $97 million deal. And then he won $30, $68 million on the course, $29 million off the course. Branson uh, DeChampo, $86 million. Bruce Kepka, $69 million. You're talking about big numbers, man. And, you know, it's really intriguing because what you did have, and I remember this really well, because when Greg Norman, if you don't, Greg Norman was a great golfer, and Greg Norman, you, you'd remember Greg Norman if you're a lot younger, maybe at the Outback uh, commercials and all that. But the bottom line is that he had tried to get the World Golf Organization together in 1994, and that didn't work. And it was, it was almost there, and they got cold feet at the very end because they had a big contract with uh, Fox, the whole ball of wax. This time it worked. This time he went to the Saudis, figured out the deal. Bottom line, the PGA folded, and they folded for sure, man. There's no doubt about it because the, the head of the – so the way it's going to work is that the PGA still is going to be – they're going to have more voting rights, but the fact of the matter is, is that the guy from Saudi Arabia is the chairman of the board. <laughs> so um, – and I suspect what that's all about, actually, is that they were going to lose that case. They were going to – they, you know – there's a huge case that's going on, and I suspect that that's, that's the real bottom line. They're going to lose that case. But it's, it's a heads up and a monster way. We'll see if the NFL is going to be next. <laughs> because once that business plan is in place, right? I mean, you can see it. You can see what happened. That all happened within a year and a half. Think about that for a second. A year and a half, they blow it apart. So we'll see where it shakes out. But I suspect that we, what we are going to see, oh, I just can't imagine that... You're one of the players that said, no, I'm not going to go for it. Imagine getting offered. Hey, I don't know what the offers were, but I know that for the amount of players that they, I think the least amount was $10 million. So, you know, you're talking about monster money. Let's go take a look at uh, Hershey's. H-S-Y. H-M-Y. So, the, oh, no. How many are you looking for? 
HSY. How do I do that? HSY, yeah. And listen, folks, if you, you know, a, a great program that's on, it's on all the time, they keep replaying it, um, on the History Channel, is that it's the making of the, the food that made America. And there's a, there's a great one that's all about Hershey, the chocolate, the whole ball of wax. It's, it's, it's awesome, man. And you'll, it, if, you, if you start watching some of those series, your bottom line, it'll pop up. So the low here is a 201, the high is 276. And just, a, just a, one fact about this, listen to this, is that Mars never would have got off the ground, you know, if it wasn't for Hershey. Because when Hershey, he, he had figured out the formula, and meaning for milk chocolate. And the way that they ended up in the middle of, uh, being, I believe, Pennsylvania, right, which they're, there, they're still there, was that he turned around, this is Hershey himself, he turned around and wanted to be in the middle of all the dairy farms. So check this out. Really an amazing deal. In the middle of the dairy farms, finally figured it out. Once he figured it out, everyone wanted a chocolate. So when Mars just started, Mars went to him and Mars just wanted to get his chocolate. And the key with Mars, of course, they had the caramel and the nuts in it. Well, the bottom line is that he wasn't worried about Mars. He sold the chocolate to Mars, and the rest is history, as they say, okay? And Mars is so huge now, it's, but here she is, too, okay? Let me just see what... I'm curious as to what they take in, because... So right now, look at this, oh, my God. 11.3 billion. 11.3 billion. And they're still growing by 3% a year. And evidently, they must have just got into salty snacks because they're growing that by 12% a year. <laughs> Unreal. Okay, so let's take a look at this baby. Food that made America. Thank you. That's what it is, yeah. Okay, so this one here. Oh, this is interesting. Now, you know, it's down on light volume today. So it's not an ABC down. But this always gets dangerous. I don't know why they whack this on price. Let me put this on a weekly. So on a weekly, oh yeah, you gotta be careful of this. I'd be careful of this, that's the bottom line. Um, the reason being is this. You see, two weeks ago and last week, that's big volume, man. It's coming in to test that. This might, this might actually get back to the breakout area, which is 241. Yeah, you got to be careful of this. You might be shot, Frank. I don't know if you're shot or not. Um, but yeah, this, this looks to me, let me put this on, a, that's in the weekly. Put this on a monthly for a second. Yeah, the monthly, it has a nice high up there with volume. That being said, though, you know, this has been a one-way trip on the way up. There's no doubt about it. So you, you do have to be careful. There's no doubt about that. And then, so if you do watch this program, you get, they, they, they have a great, a lot of great, they have, they have Wonder Bread. They have, what do they have? I, I know almost all of them by heart because I watch, I watch a lot of them two or three times, particularly because I, to see how they deal in business. That's, that's a lot of the intrigue also. Apple. Apple came out with their... Augmented uh, software yesterday or hardware and you know Apple, you know, we'll see how this shakes out, but Apple's uh, Apple's up there. There's no doubt about it. Google Same deal oil. Let's go to oil because oil's having a tough time oil is basically Flat out wanting this lower price. Yeah, even today and we, we rejected lower price today at seventy dollars and thirteen cents We'll see if that's a start that they might want to get to the top of the consolidation. The top of this consolidation wouldn't be the high of yesterday. It would actually be 74.73. And if we go to the XLE and we take a look at the XLE, that's looking to get to the top of its consolidation too, but that's only uh, 83, 81. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.
Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So Dow. Dow Industrial is up 19, NASDAQ's up 43, S&P's up 9.5. And, and you know what we might just have here now? Let me just I might have a slow grind with no volume. <laughs> because let's see what this is looking like. We, and the indices yesterday here, check this out. So the indices had a big contraction yesterday. I see this. Yesterday, the Dow only did 800, at the NYSC, only did 801 million. Today, we're at 546. If we go to the composite, we went from 44 to 43. Let's put this up here for a second. Yeah, so today you rejected lower price with light volume. Yeah, this still these swing points want to be had. So this is going to get really interesting because now what we're dealing with is this. Now you're dealing with where right now on the, is it the 5th or 6th of June? Yeah, one second. Oh, let's see what we got. Yeah, with the 6th of June, you have still plenty of days left in the month. We just started it basically. And window dressing actually just stops today. So you don't have a lot of earnings coming out. So the big next deal is going to be the 14th. The 14th meaning that's when the Fed's coming out with their meeting. And that's going to be a two-day meeting. And let's just look at this for a second. So... Yeah, so they come up with a statement on the 14th. 
that's really going to be the ne big next number that's coming in here. So I can see it grind up because what ends up happening in the summer, you can see that it already happened inside the, the market. The volatility goes down pretty dramatically in the summer, folks, okay? And after the run we had, I can see how it can go down. And, in fact, you can just grind higher for a bit until we don't. <laughs> that's, that's the kicker. Always remember, folks, the bear can claw your heart out, the bull can run you over, and thank God, there's always another trade. Health happens and prosperity. Have a great night. Have a safe night. Don't forget about our man, Mr. Tim Ord. He's going to be doing a great workshop for you coming this Thursday. Check it out on the front page of TFNN. Have a great one. Have a safe one. Come visit Tommy tomorrow morning. Kicks us off 9 a.m. We'll get him, folks.